it is evident that the Sabbath was significant to God at the beginning of creation because God rested on it. And we see evidence that it had spiritual importance to the Israelites because God called them to remember it and keep it holy. But today, it seems as if the Sabbath has lost its significance. In the context of the three angels' messages in Revelation 14, we take a closer look at the Sabbath and what role it plays today and even into eternity. View our previous videos at sabbathschooldaily.com. Obtain the study guides for these lessons at sabbath.school or ssnet.org. Holy Father, it is our honest desire to do your holy will. Give us a longing in our hearts to worship you in accordance with the manner that you have established since the creation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Does the Sabbath really matter today? In a previous lesson, besides being a memorial of creation, we found that there are many benefits to taking a 24-hour Sabbath rest. Scientific research reveals that those who set all work aside each week and rest on the Sabbath are more productive, more effective at work, have less stress, and have better physical, social, emotional, and psychological health. It is said that the Sabbath is a place of refuge or safety. It is a time in which at the end of each week, we can let go of our worries and cares and enter a quiet, sweet rest with God Almighty, the one who created us. Abraham Haskell, the famous Jewish writer, said that the Sabbath is the same as a palace in time. This palace, however, is not made of stone or brick and mortar, but it is made of time. So in essence, every seventh day, God's Sabbath, our palace in time, comes down from heaven to earth so that God can be with us. The Lord graciously invites us to spend these 24 hours in fellowship with him each week as Adam and Eve did on the first Sabbath after creation. In the introduction of Haskell's book, Susanna Haskell, his daughter writes, the Sabbath is a metaphor for paradise and a testimony to God's presence. In our prayers, we anticipate a messianic era that will be a Sabbath and each Shabbat prepares us for that experience. Unless one learns how to relish the taste of Sabbath, one will be unable to enjoy the taste of eternity in the world to come. When God created the heavens and the earth and all living things, he established the Sabbath for us. So when we rest on the Sabbath, we rest in God's loving care. We rest in hope of the everlasting rest God will give us in the new earth that is soon to come. The Sabbath is not only for rest, but according to the following scriptures, the Sabbath puts a longing in our hearts for eternity. Isaiah 66, 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Isaiah 66, 22, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. 2 Peter 3, 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And Revelation 21, 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Also, there was no more sea. The Sabbath is a glimpse of what life will be like when we reach eternity. You see, the same God who created the earth the first time will create it again. And what is interesting 
is that Isaiah 66, 23 indicates that the Sabbath is everlasting and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. This is why the Jews saw the Sabbath as a sign of the future life in heaven. In fact, they named the Sabbath Olam Haba, which means the new life to come. In other words, the Sabbath is a foretaste of the world to come. The three angels' message in Revelation 14 calls for everyone to worship God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Their message helps us to understand better the one who made us. Their appeal for us to worship the creator is heaven's answer to what seems like a hopeless situation in our world today. Hence, the Sabbath points us to our creator. Our creator is the one who made all things. He is also our redeemer. And after the judgment, when sin is eradicated, Revelation 21, 5 tells us he is the one who will make all things new. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, right, for these words are true and faithful. As the world stands, I am looking forward to the day when I can worship God face to face on the Sabbath a memorial of his creation in the new heaven and the new earth. How about you? Leave your responses in the comment section below.